Okay, this is going to be the simpler of the two investment uh, videos I'm going to make. These are the basics, and uh, it's just important since I, I really want you to understand uh, what you are investing in. I want you to understand enough so that if something were to spook you, if you see something scary in the news or you read something scary on the internet, I want you to understand this enough so that um, you, you can insulate yourself from this thing so you don't have to worry about them. So there's four places that any human being can put their money. I would argue there's four legitimate places. There's all kinds of wacky stuff out there. But when it comes down to it, the three, the four places you can put it would be cash, bonds, stocks, and real estate. That's, that's basically it. Now, where cash would just be checking account, savings account, CDs, you know, just cash, something you would have at a bank. Um, bonds... Now, bonds, a lot of people don't understand exactly what they are, but they're so simple. A bond is very simply, uh, you are loaning the money to someone. You are the bank. Like, for example, let's say Sarasota Memorial Hospital needs money to, uh, to grow. Let's say they're going to build a new uh, wing to the hospital. They could go to the public and say, look, we will pay you 3% interest each and every year for 10 years. And at the end of the 10 years, we'll give you your money back. So it, that's all it is. You are loaning somebody money. They are paying you interest on that money, just like your bank. And at the end of the term of the loan, they give you back your principal. That's all a bond is. Now, what's interesting about bonds is bonds have very, they, they're very conservative. They don't go up and down that much, much less so than stocks. And what's interesting about bonds is we kind of know over time almost exactly what they're going to do as far as returns go. Uh, we have 200 years of history when it comes to this. So we have a good idea of what it's going to do between now and the end of your life. So if you had to guess, what have bonds returned on average over the past 50 to 100, 200 years? I mean, it's really remarkable how much history we have um, going back for something like this. So the average return, drum roll please, is between 3 and 5%. If a bond portfolio does not return between 3 and 5% between now and the end of your life, it would be historically unheard of. Um, so that's what you can kind of expect from a bond portfolio. Interest rates are a little bit low right now. They are rising. Uh, three, they're closer to 3% right now, but you can expect over time for that to inch up even a little bit more. Stocks. Now, stocks, you own a piece of a company. People, people make this so complicated. And basically, if you if the company that you're investing in grows, then you get some of that growth. You get some of the money that it's uh, grown by. Uh, stocks would also pay dividends. A dividend is very simply uh, the company makes money, and then they pay you out a portion of that money um, in the form of a dividend. So they're they're paying you cash for money that the company made, and since you own part of the company, they're going to give you your share. Um, there's two different kinds of stocks. One would be a growth stock and one would be more of like a value dividend stock. So a growth stock, the company, instead of paying out dividends, would uh, instead take their profits and put it back into the company to make the company grow more. And again, you're going to make money in that way because the, your, the share price of the, of the stock is going to go up. And there's other companies that, that utilize these dividends where instead of putting the money back into the company, they pay all the profits out to um the shareholders okay so now stocks fascinating stocks over the past 10 years 20 years 50 years 100 years have always returned almost the same amount how is that possible i don't know i really pride myself in being an economic historian and i have i've studied what the stock market has done back into the 1800s and what's remarkable is how consistent the stock market is. Everyone has, to, you know, you see on the news and the market's going up and down and it seems like there's no rhyme or reason to what's happening in the stock market. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What we know is that between now and the end of your life, we have a really good idea of, of what it's going to make because it's done that <laughs> for, for centuries, right? Like if you invested, you know, let's say you, you're retired for 20 years. Um, so if you invested from 1970 to 1990 or 1940 to 1960 or 1965 to 1985, 
during any of those time periods, the return is almost exactly the same. If it was 1870 to 1890, it was almost the same return. It is absolutely remarkable uh, how stocks are over time very, very, very predictable and consistent. So guess what stocks have returned? What can you expect from a stock market portfolio? 10%. If between now and the end of your life, the market does not return around 10%, it really is historically unheard of, okay? Uh, real estate will just be your house. Maybe you have a rental property. Um, I don't really deal with that part of it, but that would be what real estate would be. So, so the key to all of this is a couple things. One, we want to make sure that each one of these buckets is filled up to the appropriate level. So uh, you want some money in cash. People ask me, well, how much money should I have in cash? There's all different kinds of different ways, that, you know, different ideas that people have. I say anywhere from 10 to 30,000 is enough. Um, some people would argue maybe 50,000. A lot of it is just comfort. You know, some people are more comfortable if they have more money uh, in their bank account. Some people want less. Not, not a big deal. You can kind of figure that out for yourself. Um, then we have bonds and stocks. Now, when it comes to bonds and stocks, you have to understand that we are not stock picking. We're not investing in one company or three companies, and we're not changing what companies we're investing in every day. We're putting these money, this money into a diversified portfolio. So when we talk about stocks, you're investing in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stocks. So that if one company were to have financial trouble, you don't need to worry about anything because there's you know hundreds of stocks that are going to be there to, to save the day. Uh, investing in individual stocks, may, you know, you might hit a home run, you might make a ton of money, you might lose all your money. So the reason why I'm not investing in individual stocks is I have a really good handle on what's going to happen long term to the entire economy, the entire stock market, but I have no idea what's going to happen to individual stocks over the long term. So, you know, we're not trying to hit a home run. I'm not trying to make it 20% a year. Uh, we're, we're trying to be relatively conservative and diversified when it comes to this. So again, stocks, you're going to be very, very diversified, invest in a lot of different companies. Bonds, very, very dis diversified, you know, thousands of different bonds. Uh, in the more, the more advanced video, we're going to talk a little more specifically about what kind of bonds and what kind of stocks. But fundamentally, this is what's happening. Uh, another important thing to understand when it comes to things like this is that uh, generally when stocks go down, bonds go up. Usually people, they escape stocks because they're scared, don't do this, and they put their money into bonds, which are uh, safer. So what ends up happening is, and if bonds go down, stocks go up, like there, there's, it's very rare where both stocks and bonds are going down at the same time. It happens here and there, and it's not a big deal, but it's very rare where that happens. So if you hear people say that they have their money in a balanced portfolio, they mean that very literally, right? They mean that, um, you know, they have some money in bonds, some money in stocks, at least one of them is always going up. Uh, so at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're investing in a diversified portfolio of stocks and bonds. Or, I mean, you, maybe you've heard people say, I'm invested in a diversified and balanced portfolio of stocks and bonds. This is all they mean. Lots of bonds, lots of stocks, put enough, the appropriate money into each, each bucket, so to speak, and then, uh, and then let, it do, let it do its thing. This is how you want to construct a portfolio. It doesn't need to be fancier than this. Um, and then, so what's happening, and we may or may not have discussed this yet, as, but we invest this money, and the idea would be on a monthly basis, you're going to start taking out the money that the money is making right? You, your whole life, you have been growing this money and growing and saving. As soon as you retire, you're hitting a, a place where you're no longer growing and saving. You're at a stage in your life where you are going to start using, okay? And there is an, a proper amount, not too much, not too little. Uh, we'll talk about that when, when we meet again. But the, the concept, the general concept is once you hit retirement, you have to pivot and you're no longer growing and saving and you don't want to die with all this money, you want to 
just start taking the money that the money is making. The money is working for you instead of you working, right? That's the whole idea of saving money. So the investment income, what this, is, this would be dividends and interest and growth and everything is going to be coming off of these investments. Now, the, in the real world, it's not like your portfolio is perfectly flat and money's coming out each month. And it's not that simple, right? In the real world, the portfolio is going like this. And sometimes you'll be getting money when the market's way up and you're going to be taking money out of your portfolio and it's still growing. That's a lot of fun. And then there's going to be times where the market's down and you're, you're taking money out. It's going to feel kind of strange because your account value is going down, but, uh, but you're still taking money out. And people ask me, well, do you get more money when the market's up you know, each month? And then like no money when the market's down? No. Well, how we set this up is we give you what the average is going to be over time because it's not going to be where I give you a bunch of money here and no money there. Like that is not how human beings work. <laughs> that's not even, that's not how you want to live your retired life. You need to live on a consistent fixed income, right? So the other thing to understand with, with, with the money that's coming out each month is the money is coming from what is working at the time. And what I mean by that is if stocks are down and bonds are up, I'm going to be sending you your monthly check from bonds. You don't know about this. I mean, this is behind the scenes, but I just want you to understand that what's happening is if the stock market is down, we're taking money from what is up at that time. So we're not selling something when it's low. Um, and then let's say the stock market goes up, then we start sending you money from stocks. We change this each month. Again, you don't see it. You don't need to worry about it, but that's what's happening. So this is the, again, this is the basic video diversified and balanced portfolio of stocks and bonds, uh, take a, a monthly check and take the money from what is working at the time. That is very simply uh, how it's a basic understanding of how a, a balanced and diversified portfolio would work uh, for a retiree, right? There's a very specific way to invest this when you're retired, right? You're no longer growing. You're at, you're at a point where you're distributing. You're at a point where you're using that money. Um, so that is the conclusion of the simple video. If you so desire, you can watch a more advanced video. You don't need to because this really is enough for a lot of people to, to understand what's going on. But I hope that was helpful and see you, see you soon.